Okay, this is our Kells, You Can Get It, directed by Max Kerman, take one. Hey, my name is Mark Myers, and in this video I'm going to break down the new Arkells music video I just directed featuring K-Play, and the song is called You Can Get It. So the video just came out this past week, but it's been about a month and a half in the making, and in this video I'll break down how it came to be. And it's also worth noting that uh, I wasn't the first choice to direct the video, uh, I only say because it's true, and it's just the nature of the beast. That's just how the industry goes. But I was super happy to have gotten the call, and that's kind of where it all starts. I get a call from Max, the lead singer, and Ash, manager Ash, and whenever their name pops on my phone, I'm like, ooh, what's this all about? So when they called, they had a concept in mind, and that was a spoof on Wheel of Fortune. And I believe they were originally considering that the lyrics to the song would appear on the letterboard. And one of the first things they were asking me was how should we best bring this to life? Shoot on green screen against that LED background or what? For the last video that I directed uh, called Pub Crawl, they had also called with a concept in mind. But when I heard the song, a new creative idea came to mind and I shared that with them. Around 5 p.m. there's 11 of us throwing credit cards in the head. And they're like, yeah, that's good. This time I decided not to try and steer the ship in a different direction, just go in the direction that they wanted to go and try and bring whatever creative energy ideas that I could bring to the project. So just like the last video, I started with what I'm calling a text edit, which is just white text on a black screen over the music video saying what's happening moment by moment. So just looking back at my original text edit, some things in here that didn't change were the opening where Max would start at his place looking into camera as he's setting up a, a kind of crappy green screen. And then that jump cutting to the game show world. I wasn't sure who's gonna host the video so I had Mike listed as the host and Tony, Tim and Nick as contestants. At that time I had done as we had discussed and put the lyrics to the song on the letterboard. But we later changed that. Tell me what you want right now. My idea was to have the host say those words as if talking to the contestant. Tell me what you want right now. And then the contestant would respond with the ooh, ooh. as if thinking and then saying a letter. And I'm fine to admit when I don't know something, so towards the end of the video it kind of all got confusing in my mind. I, I, nothing was really clear on what should happen, so I would just write, not sure yet. And then there's a horn section and I'm like, not sure yet. And then there's like the final chorus. And I was like, I don't know. But I did know that I wanted to book end the video, so it was going to end the same way it started with Max back in the real world uh, in his apartment in front of the green screen. So next it was time for Max, Ash and I to actually meet up and brainstorm. And it was in that meeting where I kind of brought up a bunch of things that I wanted to bring to the table and we formalized a lot of what was going to end up in the video. For example, the pandemic would play a role uh, in the same way that Max would maybe be forced to make a video by himself in his apartment. We would lean into things like referencing the lockdown and when we we're saying tell me what you want right now it would really be in relation to things that we actually wish we could do or have right now but due to covid we can't yeah well, you can get it. so that i started to really get excited when i was like oh this is more than just a surface level wheel of fortune parody vanna you are looking lovely today <laughs> A woman of few words. Also, the idea that the wheel itself would act as like a guide or a, an editor that depending on what you landed on, you would then cut to or do that task. So even with all those things coming into place, there were still a whole bunch of other things, other challenges that we needed to still iron out. Namely, green screen or LED. We chose green screen. Which location? We chose Sterling Studio, which is in Toronto, and it also had another common room that would function as our apartment. So we got a two-in-one with that location. What's practical, what's 3D that would be made digitally? We decided that the wheel and the panel where the contestants stand in front would be practical, so we needed a construction crew to build that, while the 3D elements would be the letterboard and backgrounds. So we got working on that. So with all those things in place, I had to just think about the music video even more. So I made another text edit. I even took footage from 
an actual Wheel of Fortune game and, and intercut that throughout the video just to even get a better sense of like shots and pacing. Yeah! Well, you can get it! Yeah! Yeah! You can get it! Tell me what you want now. Oh, something that's really worth noting is as a director, they kind of get all the shine, the spotlight, but really without a good DP, the director is just a guy with some ideas. They're responsible for lighting it and for shooting it. So I worked with someone who I've worked with before. He's really good, he's a pro, his name's Hattie. And with him on board, I knew that everything was gonna be good. So with only a few more days before the shoot, I'm responsible for the shot list. Normally an AD helps make the schedule and goes through the shot list with you, but I tend to not work with an AD, maybe just because I haven't found uh, one that really clicks with me. So I end up doing all that stuff myself. Uh, and then for a sneak peek on what my shot list actually looked like, I just, it just broke it out like this. It's just per scene, not very complicated, but. So pre-production was done, it was now time to shoot the video. And we did so on March 13th on a Saturday. I have to have breakfast first. So I'm on my way to the music video shoot. Make sure my garage shut. And I'm close. I've got this big old board, which is uh, essentially the schedule for the day. Right now, it is 9.21. So music videos tend to take about like 12 hours. Sometimes you get a half day to pre-light and prep. Uh, we weren't doing that. So I knew right off the bat that the first three hours of the morning were gonna be, not written off, but solely for prepping. Hello. What's up, bro? How are you? That's good, man. Also another thing to consider when shooting a video is what order are you gonna do it in? Like what elements are you gonna shoot first, etc. So the plan was to shoot with the wheel first, get that in, it was the most difficult, get that out of the way, and leave all the stuff with just Max at the very end, and if we needed to rush, we could do so easier. So the way we worked was, uh, while the lower set was getting prepped, while the wheel and lights downstairs were getting prepped, we were simultaneously prepping for the shoot in the apartment where Max would open and close the video. So this is the first set, this is the apartment set, and this is where Max is supposed to be setting up the green screen, and he's supposed to like, magically, cut to the world of the game show. You can get it! It is now two minutes until noon, which is when we were hoping to shoot, but I think we're close. Max is in wardrobe. Max, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, taking a big swing here with these overalls. I've had dreams of wearing overalls for a couple of years now. Finally pulled the trigger yesterday. Found a brand that I liked. Um, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I sent some photos to friends. And they all made fun of me. What was the best comment? Uh, one person said I look like a 90s lesbian in a sitcom. <laughs> uh, would you agree with that, Caitlin? No. Oh, it's all the haircut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's neither a yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is our Kells, You Can Get It, directed by Max Kerman, take one. Two. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Three, two. Tell me what you want and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm not giving up, come on, we got nothing left to lose. I've been from the start, you know I'm not going anywhere. I've been, tell me what you want, you can get it. So the apartment scene was over, Max did a great job upstairs. We got our beginning of our video and the end of our video taken care of. Now it was time to work with the band and do all the gameplay stuff. So we had Tony as the host, and we had Mike, Nick, and Tim as our contestants. Also, Mike DeAngelis, the lead guitarist, he's also uh, an amazing graphic designer, and he does a lot of the, or all the band kind of artwork. His original artwork for the song, the YCGI, that kind of color palette that he used there really influenced the color palette that I decided to use for the video. And he actually designed the wheel vinyl. So thank you. We just started wide 
went through all the gameplay. I don't know how other music video directors like to work or prepare, uh, but for me, for my final end product, I don't want it to just be like a montage. And we're gonna need a montage. So although it may seem simple, the gameplay that's happening in the background throughout the video was difficult to kind of nail down and get right. Because I wanted to know letter by letter, phrase by phrase, what is happening and when, so that when someone solves a puzzle, it's happening exactly when the music is hitting. Sand between my toes. You can get it. Tell me what you want and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. So for me, that was almost like the last thing that I kind of ironed out. And the way I did that was like this. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of just, I uh, color coded the band members and then just listed out that they're gonna spin, say S. two S's, what that looks like on the board, and so on. Yeah. Uh, horn section's coming up. Yeah, we're I'm returning them. Are they new or vintage? No, no, they're new. They're new. Wow. They're very expensive. Tell me what you want. After the wide shot, we moved closer to get a three shot of the contestants and ran through it all again. Fire up. <laughs> Whew. Just stepped outside to take a breather. So it is 3.30. I think it looks really good. I'm happy with how it looks. So lunch is over, just trying to get some sunshine and fresh air and another donut, might as well. Uh, hopefully we're back on set in about 15 minutes and uh, we can rock this. Let's see, yummy. Then we went into the close-ups and ran through it all again. Fire round. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> and this may seem excessive or unnecessary, but really it does feel that way when you're on set. It's like, okay, you gotta do this part again. Read my lips. But when it comes to the edit, you might have moment by moment in your mind, but ultimately you need all that, like, it's not even coverage. You need all those shots, so when you come back to the edit, you're in a good place. After all the individual shots of the band members, it was just a matter of getting the top down of the wheel, landing on various panels, and that was a wrap for the band and the wheel. So that got out of there. Then it was time for Max to just do his thing. With Max, I kind of just say action, and then it's just about maybe minor comments or tweaks to his performance. But with Max, there's very little that I have to say and he kind of just goes for it. You can get it. We essentially had three shots of Max, which was like a wide, full body, what they call a cowboy, and like a medium close up. Oh, if I forgot to mention this individual in this video, I would be mad at myself. So Eric Martin, I need to thank him a lot. Uh, he's the like tour manager for the band and he ended up being like the production manager in the two days prior to the video and the day of the video. So the wheel that was made was awesome. It looked so good, but it was white. He did all the painting, making sure that everything was done and ready for camera. So I needed huge thank you to Eric, so thank you. And that's a wrap and thank you. So that was it, the video was shot. Uh, so now the hard work begins, which is the edit, uh, especially with everything being green screen. So because I predetermined what the edit of the video is before I go and shoot it, the editing of a music video happens like pretty quickly. I sent it to K-Flay's team. They sent us back footage on the Wednesday but it started to feel overwhelming. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all this green screen footage. I've got to key it all, I've got to, I've got to do all the work. So I reached out to a buddy uh, that I used to work with that much, Travis Laidlaw. He was kind enough to actually ask, oh, how the how's the video, how's it going? And I was like, oh, good, but all this green screen stuff. And he's like, hey man, 
If you send me some footage, I can try and key some of it for you. So I actually sent him Hayflay's footage and he then sent back it all keyed. So huge thank you to Travis. So thanks so much. So while I was doing my part uh, in the edit, I was simultaneously working with a 3D animator on delivering all the elements that I needed, all the assets. So it kind of came down to the wire, but I dropped them in, made small little refinements to the timing and tweaking little things. And that's it. The video was done. Uh, and I was happy with the end product. You can get it! So that's it. That's the making of the behind the scenes of the video. A big shout out to Nathan Nash for all the photography that you saw throughout the video. There's a whole bunch of things I probably forgot to mention, but uh, just wanted to say thanks for watching. And I hope you liked the video. Hope you liked the behind the scenes. I was considering doing an actual breakdown of how I edit a music video. So if anyone wants to see that, please leave a comment below and I will try and make that a reality. Thanks so much. Bye.